Thanks for tuning in guys, it's the Pest and Lawn Ginger, and this is my lawn. So the spring storms have finally come to an end, we're not going to see one for another 10 days, and it's finally time to turn on the water. Uh, had a few problems with watering last uh, fall, and I'm really hoping that I don't have too many issues. But today we're going to focus on watering. Now a quick sneak peek at the rough cut of the lawn, you can see the iron treatment really came in well. Uh, the colors are all starting to even out. The grass is a little bit longer. I have not cut it yet. It is time for a mow. Now I've got a few stress marks over here and it's not this little guy. <laughs> it's uh, the brown streaks coming through here. Now we had a little bit of stress due to the verticutting or the scarifying that we did. And uh, we need to get the water on. Everything's stressing. But the lawn, I wish you guys could feel it. It feels silky smooth. Really, really happy with it. Now we've got our dog problem over here and you can see the color starting to even out. We got another storm that came through that activated the fertilizer, forced a little bit of growth, so it's starting to look a little better. Now water is 70% of your success. Proper watering will always lead to a successful lawn. Now, improper watering leads to 90% of my lawn assessments. Whether you be overwatering or underwatering, it causes problems. Now, I've stressed my lawn out just to ha a tad to make sure that we get the maximum root growth that we're gonna get. Now, I did not let the soil dry out completely in the front yard. I do have some problem areas in my backyard along the fence line that I gotta focus on. Man, I gotta say, even though it's a little stressed out, it looks really good. This thing's gonna pop once we get the watering in there. I'm pretty excited. If this is your first time turning on the water, we're gonna use a water key. These are typically T-bars that are six feet. Now stateside, we usually have these uh, water mains and then anywhere between six and 12 feet off the water main is your shutoff valve. And so we wanna make sure that we turn that on, get the water going through the system. Now, second of all, I have this issue, which I have a, uh, it's a drain valve and they make you do it above the ground. It drives me nuts because typically here where I live in Utah, water freezes in about November, December, and I'm still trickling water in to keep the plant happy because I don't want the soil to dry out. Well, mine burst last year. I'll post a picture here so you guys can see it. So my issue is I'm fingers crossed that the valve did what it did and that it, it uh, let water out so I didn't have a problem. So let's go ahead and turn this on and see what happens. So far, so good, nothing catastrophic. All the heads seem to be spraying. Um, I've got to make some slight adjustments at the base of some of these heads where they got pushed. I find that the best way to do this is to put a rock right here. So you fold it up just like this and then put a rock in the empty space. Pretty simple. I'm a little ghetto, I like the easy fixes. And uh, this head isn't standing quite the direction that I would like it to. So I'm just gonna apply a little pressure at the base and pull it without breaking it. And I'm going to shove a rock underneath it. And voila, straight as an arrow. Now I have a, a love-hate relationship with these funny looking heads right here. They come out like spider legs, right? And a lot of you guys out there have them and you don't know how to use them. That's pretty common. These are made by Hunter. They're called their Rotator MP1000 through 3000. So they have MP1000, 2000, and 3000. The difference between the models is how far out they spray. Now these specific models were meant to be low flow heads. So they run at 40 PSI, which is really, really low. Now, the problem with them is, is they don't put out a ton of volume. So for those of you guys who are used to the regular rotary heads, uh, you guys are putting out almost half an inch of water every 20 minutes. These put out anywhere between 0.38 and 0.45, so less than half an inch of water per hour. It's a big deal because you have to increase the amount of time that you spread. Now, as you can see here, a couple of my MP rotators, they are not working properly. 
So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check the filter real quick to see if we're just dealing with a debris issue that is preventing the amount, the correct amount of water to come out. All right, check the filter on these, pretty simple. You're just gonna wanna use a flathead screwdriver, pop it up, and then we're gonna screw the top right off. The filter is underneath here. We're just gonna visually inspect it, make sure it's clear. I really don't see any debris. So we're gonna put it right back on top, screw it back in. Pretty simple process. You can see that one's got a little bit of debris in it. So we're just gonna blow it off. This really isn't enough debris to cause any problems. Now let's turn it back on and see what we got. All right, let's test it out and see where we're at. Okay, so the problem I'm having is with that sprinkler and that sprinkler. Now you can see the one at the far end is already dysfunctioning. And so I took a quick trip down to Home Depot, bought a bunch of new ones because it definitely does not look like it's repairing itself. So let's go ahead and fix her up. This is fairly simple and expensive. Um, these heads at Home Depot are about $7. Um, the thing I like about them is that you save money on watering, not because you're not watering as much, it's because you can get the water lined up really, really well without having to overspray as much onto the sidewalk. So it's as simple as taking it out and putting it in. Now I'm gonna replace a couple of these heads. These are the MP1000. The difference between the 1000, the 2000, and 3000 is the distance that these spray out. Now on this one, I only need about uh, eight feet. And you notice, according to this label on the MP1000, it'll go eight to 15 feet. Now the one thing I really like about these heads is how simple it is to make the adjustments. First thing you're gonna do is just grab it by the, by the stem and you're gonna set your left line. So I want my left line above this bush so I want it up over here, go to the right just a hair, and that's about where I want it. Now to set your direction this way, you have this key, but you really don't need it. You can use your hands, and you literally just turn it to the left, and it's that easy. Now to set my direction on how far out it sprays, you turn it, uh, memory serves me right, you turn it to the right, it decreases, and to the left, it increases. So I've got it set exactly where I want it, and that took a walk in like two seconds. I'm uh, pretty satisfied how easy it is. Now as you can see, these heads are really easy to set up. They are a lot more expensive than your average head, but with that said, as long as you understand how these MP rotators function, you're going to have a good experience with them. Now, the biggest thing that we got to figure out next is water output. Now, I find that these, uh, they put out far less water because the amount of pressure that they need is less. So the way that they built the heads is they put out less water. They're slow flow. Uh, a couple of reasons why I like this. Number one, it allows the water to seep deep into the soil slowly. So you lose less water off of surface runoff into areas with slopes or just flat areas that have slight declines and maybe you aren't really aware of or little divots. It all starts with water and understanding proper watering is the key to lawn success. Now what we want to do is we want to start with a base amount of water. So if you're just turning on your sprinklers, we're going to have to do a couple of heavy waterings. We want to create a reservoir of water six to eight inches deep into the soil, which means right off the bat, it may take four or five inches of water to create that reservoir. Now, the reason why we want to create this reservoir is simple. We want to keep up with evaporation and transpiration from the plant. That is the water that we want to be replacing with our sprinkler system. We don't want the water to sit on top because we want the roots to go down deep. So ideally, we want to do less days and more minutes. Ideally, two or three for our sandy loam and clay soils. 
and up to four to five for our sandy soils. Now understanding water output is crucial because that will determine how much evaporation you're going to be replacing during the week. So start off with the deep watering, do a water test to see how deep that water is actually penetrating, then set your water accordingly. Now I know the next question for most of you is gonna be, Ginja, how do I know how much water a week that I need to put out on my lawn? I know you in Utah, you need an inch in May, an inch and a half in June, so on and so forth, but what about my area? That all is going to be dependent on the outside temperatures and how much evaporation, how much transpiration that you're gonna get. The best thing that you could do is get an AMS oil probe or just a long enough screwdriver and test it every single week until you get dialed in and make sure you get proper saturation weekly. Now if you do too much, it's gonna cause fungal problems. You do too little, it's not gonna be where you want it. So it's very important you get this dialed in. Now I'm not sure you noticed, but throughout this video, my lawn's been getting darker simply from just watering. It's pretty amazing how that works. The plant is going to use it when it's available. You're gonna to want to let color be your guide. Now, if you start seeing mushrooms, you need to back off just a tad, a couple of minutes per station until the mushrooms stop. So the next step of the process is figuring out water output. I ended up purchasing these uh, rain gauges off of Amazon for 20 bucks. You guys don't have to do that. I just like that they're clearly marked. It makes my job pretty simple, especially when I'm going to diagnose a lawn. Uh, if you don't want to purchase these, you can go to your local Dollar Tree, get the Betty Crocker uh, Tupperware cups. They're about three inches by three inches round. It's three for a dollar, much, much cheaper. Now, as you can see here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put these cups between each one of my heads. Now I'm gonna go over to my sprinkler box. I'm gonna run a 20 minute cycle. I wanna see how many inches per hour of water we're getting out. Now by the manufacturer, it says 0.41. So let's go see what happens. Now the purpose of this exercise is two ways. We wanna figure out output, but we also want to possibly expose any coverage issues from the sprinklers or areas that are not quite getting enough coverage. In those instances, we're gonna to have to figure out a workaround to get more or less water where they're at. Now I'm hoping with all the sprinkler repairs I've done, it's pretty consistent across the board. The next step of my process, I go to google.com forward slash maps. I get on top of my property and then what I do is I write down where my cups are at. So I got cup one, two, three, four, um, and then five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. After I run my 20 minute cycle, I'm gonna record my data now this is my 20 minute cycle, so in order to get to my hourly output, it ends up being 0 .3, uh, 0 0.3 inches per hour, which means on a weekly, I'm gonna need to be at three and a half hours of watering per week. And that's why these are really, really slow flow heads. Now I've got a couple of adjustments I gotta make. Zone 10, which was right here, is getting a little bit too much water. Um, I imagine it's, it's off of the triple coverage from the head that's either here, 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 or here. So I'm gonna make slight adjustments on zone 10 and then also some slight adjustments on zone seven. Now, it is permissible because I'm not way far off, but zone seven is right here. But there's a couple of things I can do to help out to even out the coverage. All right guys, there you have it. That is reality. I'm gonna have to water two times a week right now for an hour and 45 minutes in order to get to my one inch per week. Now guys, don't guess on your watering. The 20 minute set it and forget it is dead. There's too many sprinkler choices out there. Run this little project, buy these little cups off of Amazon. I got a description in the link or just go to your local dollar store and get those Betty Crocker cups. It's much better than guessing. It's almost as bad as the spray and pray you guys do on the lawns without calibration. Calibration's key. Watering is 70% of your success. Guys, I really appreciate you being part of my channel. If you have any questions or concerns, hit me up in the comments. Love to help you guys out. Until next time, guys, Ginger, I'm out of here. Bye.